So in this video, what I wanna do is go through some really basic techniques for how you can understand tone curves and how they can help you make great photos. Fantastic to see you all again. So I'm back at last to doing a midweek video, the five in five, um, sort of trying to give you five tips in five minutes. I very rarely give you five tips or do it in five minutes. I don't know why I called it that, but anyway, I'm back and I posted all my uh, Vistas books off now, all my pre-orders. So thanks ever so much if you did order one of these. There's a few left, not many, but there's a few left. So if you do want one, then there's a link in the description. So what I wanted to do today is talk all about the tone curve um, and just go to the, the the basics of the tone curve really because I think uh, it's something that's maybe not super intuitive. I know when I first started using it a little bit more then I was a little bit confused by it and just did it by trial and error really. So uh, I, I'll go through the basics of it first and then we'll have a look at some photos. So what you can see here is um, a histogram of an image um, and then on top of that I've just put the, 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 the tone curve. Now in this particular case it's just the straight line, the basic tone curve that you have that actually reflects no changes to the image and I want to explain why that is. So at the bottom here this is the input. So this is this is your image and this is the output. This is what you see in your image file on the screen. So this is like the raw data and this is the output, how you're going to see it. And what happens is that this line tells Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever editing software you're using how to interpret the colours. So we know that the histogram, the blacks are at the left hand side, the whites are at the right hand side. So in this particular image there's no exact black, there's no exact white and it's, you know, it's got a reasonably well distributed tonal range through it with peaks in the, in the brighter regions. Um, um, which you'd expect for a snowy image. Now this tone curve is saying don't do anything to it at the moment and the reason being is that if I just look at the input point there and that's grey halfway through it's saying output that as grey. If I look at the white point it's saying the point on the curve there is white and if I look at the black point it's there. So and then you know if I look at here then it's there. So it's exactly the same. It's it's that that straight diagonal line there is saying the input and the output are the same. Um, don't do anything. Okay, so let's let's add another layer in now. And on this layer, we'll do a slightly different tone curve. So I'll do a tone curve that's more like a standard what we call an S curve, like that. And what this is saying is a few different things really. So, so this is saying grey is still grey, but here what it's saying is that this point here, which is sort of mid-grey, now is a little bit darker. And this bit, which is sort of mid-white, is a little bit whiter than what it would have been if it had been on here. And what this effectively allows you to do is change the contrast of your image. So it allows you to distribute that tonal range of your image differently and, and, and look at it in a different way. So if we just go back a few steps just to the curve, what we can see, which is, re which is really important, is that we're representing those mid-tones now that are say between here and maybe here this range is now represented by this range here, which is bigger. So we've expanded or added more contrast to those mid-tones there. Now once you understand that, once you understand that a steeper line adds more contrast and a shallower line reduces the contrast, then you can do really clever things with your image and you can start to understand why those things are happening. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into some images, knowing what we know there, and I'm going to show you how you can apply different curves and why it changes the image in the way it does. So what we'll do is we'll go on, let's go and have a look at Lightroom. So this is a good image here I've got in Lightroom. So this is an image of, on one of my workshops of some of the photographers shooting this amazing sunset. And I've just got the tone curve over the top of it. 
Now, if I just applied that contrast curve that I just did, we'll put, we'll put a point there, we'll put another point there, and you can see that that's added contrast to the image. And, and what it does is it, it adds contrast in this mid-tone area here. But say you didn't want to do that. Say you wanted to add your contrast in the sky. You wanted to make the sky more contrasty. So to do that, you would have to, we'll just delete these two points, you'd have to make it steeper in the sky area and not so steep in the other area. And now you can see, because it's steep here, these bright tones here are represented by more tones now on the output side here. So I've made the brighter areas down here and here and here more contrasty. Let's look at another one. So on this one here, we have got an image. Now say we want to make the blacks not so black. Well, it's easy to do that. This is black. And if we want to make it not so black, then we're going to say the black point here is going to be lighter. And you can see that all the blacks go lighter. And what it's saying is that only show all these tones here, the black to the white, just on this limited range here. So I don't want to show anything that's completely black. It's, there's, there's going to be nothing in the image that's completely black. The higher up I go with that, I'm effectively reducing the contrast of the image or getting rid of the black in the image more and more. And if I went all the way to the top, then it'd go completely white. Hopefully that makes sense. So what I could do is I could say, okay, I don't want any blacks, but I still want to add a bit of contrast, more contrast in the dark areas. So if you remember how we do that, to add contrast in the dark areas, then we have to make it steeper. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to make that steeper, but then we don't want it all to be steep, so I'm just going to flatten that off. Um, and what that will do, if we just do it here, say, So what that's done now is it's added contrast. Now I'm not saying this looks good, by the way, but it's added contrast in the darker tones in the image. And, and you could do it the other way around. I could get rid of these. And I could say, okay, I just want to add contrast in the sky, the lighter tones in the image. So to do that, I'd have to drop that down, but I don't want to change the, I don't want to change the um, shadows too much, I'm just going to move it up a little bit. So all it's doing now is affecting these lighter tones and I've added some contrast in the sky, but I've left the shadow areas as they are. And if I want to, I could again just get rid of some of the blacks in there. So by knowing about this, so by understanding how this these curves work, you can do things that are really creative in, in your images. And one of the ways that I do this is in woodland. So if I look at some of these woodland shots, so say I've got a shot like this, for instance. So this was taken, um, there was a little bit of mist, and, and actually it didn't look so crispy as that. So say I wanted to just reduce those blacks, then we know I can say all the blacks I want to be a little, slightly lighter, and I can make it look slightly softer, and it's a really good way of altering your woodland images. Also, if I wanted to reduce the contrast in the light areas, I could just move that up, and that's going to reduce the contrast here, but slightly increase the contrast in the darker areas. And if I want to do the opposite, increase the contrast in the light areas and decrease the contrast in the dark areas, I could do that. And that's going to be shallower there in the dark areas and steeper in the light areas. So by changing this, you can change the contrast. Now what you've also got to remember is that by moving these things up and down, you're also changing the brightness of those particular points as well. Because if you remember, this, this point now is higher, then it's saying that mid-grey now is a little bit lighter. So two things that you're changing. It's the contrast and, and how bright that particular point is. Again, on, on a shot like this, um, this, this is a, a shot that I've already edited um, a little bit and outputted it slightly differently. So in a shot like this, then again, I'd want to just, just slightly reduce those blacks in there because I want it to be just a nice, soft, moody image. And you can go, you can really, you can really change that if you want to. So you could really have a very soft looking image with hardly any black. And that looks very different than what we had before with a just a straight line like that. So hopefully 
that makes sense. Hopefully you understand that a little bit and understand how powerful a tone curve can be. It's super simple. You've just got to remember that all you're doing is saying, this is the input tones on the bottom and what do I want those to look like on the screen? How do I want those to be outputted? And this curve just does that for you. It's just like a lookup thing. It just says, I want this gray to be this tone. I want the black to be this tone or the white to be not just slightly off white. So you can also use the tone curve to um, change the colors. It's a way of toning your image. So for instance, blue, a blue curve, if I wanted just to make the, 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 the whites in this bluer, then I could just do that. And that's just gonna affect the, the, the highlights in, in the image. And if I reduce it, it's gonna go more yellow because the opposite of blue is yellow. So hopefully that has been some use. Hopefully you've found that interesting and you, know, you can go and have a play with tone curves. It's a good idea just to experiment and just go and play with it and, and try it. But the most important thing is understand why it's doing it so that you, you, you can understand why an S curve adds more contrast and when to add a steeper curve on, in your shadows or a steeper curve in your highlights. I also wanted to mention the 2020 ND um, hashtag. I've, I've sort of neglected that a little bit over the last few weeks, um, but next week I'm gonna look at some of the images as well. Uh, so I thought it'd be really good to just share spring photos. So anything that's relating to spring, it can be anything whatsoever, share them on the hashtag hash 2020nd, I'll have a look at them and then I'll talk about some of those images in next week's video. Uh, I'll maybe do a little bit of a critique of them as well. So if you're not interested in that or if you don't want me to um, critique your image, then just mention it in the comment in, in the image and I'll, 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 I'll ignore it, I won't include it. I just want to point out the good things in the images and, and, and share you know, my thoughts on those images and if I can say anything that might help you improve the image. Okay, that's it. And until Sunday, bye.